Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. All right. My apologies for being a little bit late. I was transferring a bunch of files from an external hard drive. And um, when I do that, it like completely locks down my computer. So I was like, I couldn't open Photoshop. And like, it was just anytime I would try to do something, it was, um, it was actually slowing the transfer down. And then it does that classic thing where it'll be like all five minutes left. And then all of a sudden it's like 25 minutes and you're like, no, 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 not 25 minutes five minutes let's get this done so hold on i'm opening the pascal files right now and then i'll get to the chat really fast um but yeah i've, I've been a fan of pascal stuff for um god a long time now to be honest i didn't know how he did his work originally and um i i um i had um an idea but i wasn't sure but then like when he got on instagram and started showing his process and he also he did a gnome on um uh tutorial on his on how he creates an image and uh it's it's pretty interesting and um you know we talk about a lot of different ways to do stuff here and uh this is another way to approach art so let's see i'm gonna grab some of his more recent stuff too let me grab these and i'm just gonna grab a few more now you could do this with blender as well or really probably any sort of like 3D sculpting program. I I vaguely remember that he uses ZBrush, but I could be wrong on that. And then I'm going to just grab a couple more of his more recent ones. Okay, let me get back to this. All right, so what is up, everyone? We've got James. James with a super chat already. Thank you, James. Rich may be a few minutes late. No biggie, but I'm passing it along. Yeah, oh, right. Thank you. We've got Will. Will was here first. What's up, Will? You got to do one for Kelsey. I would do a show on Kelsey. That would be fun. How there? What is up? How there? We've got Stefan. What's up, Stefan? Sub fam. Oh, and um, Will was saying that um, the chat wants more Stuart Immonen. So we'll have to look into doing more Stuart. We've got Jack. A rare thing to catch at the start and not the last five minutes. Well, there you go. You, you're just getting used to it. You know, look, I'll be honest. I didn't even promote this on Instagram anymore. And the views are exactly the same. So, I mean, at some point, I'm hoping that I don't need to like every day go to Facebook and be like, hey, I'm going live in a few minutes or uh, like Twitter and stuff like that. Um, what's up, Skip? How are you? Um, we got Matt, Daniel. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, Grizz Gores. It's a pretty cool name. You could be like a you could be in like a comic book with that name. <laughs> My name's too boring. Hello, friends with benefits. Yeah, right. The Gurch. <laughs> it reminds me of the Gooch from um <laughs> different strokes. What's up, Paulus? How are you? All right, so let's get to the art. Let me um I'm gonna grab just one more little stack of of Pascal's stuff from this folder. Um, this was his Instagram uh man, probably about oh gosh, how long ago? I'm gonna say probably a year back maybe a little bit more hold on, i'm going to catch up with the comments and then open my phone i gave you a reach around under the bleachers remember <laughs> good i'm glad it's part of your daily routine now don't forget on fridays i don't do it because it literally i would go crazy if i had to do youtube six days a week it's even too much for me look I've, i'll be honest too i've said this before um i get sick of hearing myself talk i'm really not i i'm not it's, it's weird because you you go well you're on youtube all the time like how how is this not your personality but i'm telling you like i'm way more a doer with art than a talker about it which is why i don't really talk about myself and my own art as much i mean i'll throw in my opinions but um yeah i mean like when i used to do a lot of like youtube videos i would get so just fucking sick of hearing myself talk i i was like i can't i can't hear my opinion on anything else i'm over <laughs> So even I have a, a a threshold for how much rich I can take. I'm actually, you know, it's funny too, is I'm I'm making it a point to document my pencils. I mean, normally I do take photos along the way, but what you find is when you're working on a job, at some point it becomes more about the work and less about like documenting the process. Um, and uh, sometimes I'll catch myself going like, ah, shit, I should have probably taken photos while I was working on this. But normally I do. But um, it's it's one of those things too. scanning it along the way is really a pain in the ass. But if you're going to do a good art of book, then you probably should scan it. So let's see what Farben says real quick. ZBrush has the worst interface of any commercial program. Wish I could get into it, but I would rather learn Super Sculpey. Well, 
if you like super sculpy you know you could always use that a lot of people use the combination of things i mean blender is really popular and blender is free um and the great thing about blender i was here is um that it's got such a large community because it is a, a open source um tool that um there's tons of tutorials on it where sometimes other things it's not as easy to get um information on so all right we're not going in any particular order unfortunately his scans on in, in instagram are not as high res as some that people upload so he's very aware of posting like a very certain i mean anything on the internet is 72 dpi but there's like like his looked i i'd op i'd open another one i was like oh, it's kind of pixely but this one is too so i mean this like if i saw this i would go okay that definitely looks like a 3d model that's been colored or painted or um, you know, um, there's different sort of materials you can put on stuff. 3D Coat is a really good program for it. Um, but it's it's a nice piece. I think sometimes the posing and stuff like that can be a little stiff. Um, like the hand doesn't really seem to be interacting with um, her staff very good. You know, if there was a little more tension in the fingers or even a little bit more of the staff or the, the hand actually grabbing the staff, I think it would be a little more unbelievable but still it's a nice piece he's got a like there's a corbin kind of vibe to his figure work this is pretty cool okay let me catch up okay that looks so daz 3d yeah i mean it can i mean that's that's sort of the risk that you run with it there's a certain proportion and i know you can customize any of the um any of the 3d programs poser had it daz has it um you know you can you can morph the bodies they've, they've got all kinds of um not only morphs built in, but you, there's other things that you can adjust. Um, but, but, um, yeah, there's a proportional thing that I can kind of see when people use 3d models. And, and, and even like, I've said this a bunch of times, there's a few artists at Marvel that have been using them for a long, long time Two two very popular artists in particular. Um, and they've never, ever said one word about using it. And it's, it's their, their right to, they don't have to say it, but, um, I can see it in their work. There's there's a level of consistency that's very noticeable. There's also um, a structure um, thing that's a tell to me. But I, I, I've i said that for 10, 10 or 12 years. It's been going on for a long time. This is great. He gets some really, really good, like rusty and sort of corroded textures on his stuff. I love that. Man, it looks so good. But he's he's got like a very sort of... Um, 60s 70s fantasy art vibe but with a little bit of more contemporary design and stuff like that um adam warren's empowered series is not artist edition but rather a graphic novel shot from pencils when he had social media he would post process pics and he used sketchup oh uh stewart emmerman oh nice that's cool and stewart i mean stewart actually i think really um incorporates it into his work quite seamlessly again this to me looks like a 3d model when i look at this um t-rex or whatever it is it, it feels like that but i don't think he's really trying to hide it with this it's you know got a little bit of a frazetta vibe it reminds me a little bit of um no man's land like the color palette um and uh it's just fun stuff the better you know and this is what i always say to people is the better that you draw the better you're going to be at these programs in terms of being able to um take take these tools to the highest level possible um you know if 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 like say if this uh, well, i'm not saying this piece is but i'm saying if say like a piece like this you could practice a certain like group of programs for two or three months and get to this level well imagine what someone that's been drawing for 10 or 15 years could do with the same program with an ability to paint beyond what the program kind of gives you at a surface level what what poses what pose capabilities it has where you know um you know you you look at something and you go oh, okay i definitely need to fix this this arm needs to be tweaked a little bit and that that really will fall on either your ability to to um you know create form move form or if you understand the dynamics of of just like figure drawing and stuff like that it'll it'll all um tie into it what are the first letters of the first names of the two artists using 3d models a little hint now nah, i'm not gonna out them rhymes with no <laughs> if you don't know then they're doing a good job of hiding it from you <laughs> they know 
I've I've given clues not of their names, but of ways that you can spot that they use it in other videos. I think I even said it yesterday. There's ways to tell, but you have to you have to look at things that they do. This is really cool. The lighting on this is great. Um, yep, yeah, it's really really cool. I actually did check out his Nomon DVD. I had a I had a subscription to Nomon, and right at the end, like literally, I think maybe a few days before my subscription was going to end, they um, actually added like three new tutorial things, and one of them was his. And I actually got to check it out right at the very end, and it, it was it was really interesting to see. It was quite long too. It was like close to between two and three hours, I think. So if you really want to, um. I've seen a video about Immonin's Im process and it was uploaded by him, but then he took it down, deleted it. I hate when that happens. Yeah, you got to Like people always say, Kelsey and I joked about this. Um, the like the saying is, oh, once it's on the Internet, it's there forever. It's like, no, it's not. A lot of times when that stuff goes up, you need to grab it right away because artists have a change of heart or whatever ends up happening. This is great, man. I love this. This is so cool. Um, but yeah, you know, they'll pull stuff down. There's, there's certain artists that I follow. Actually, I'll, I'll say one guy's name who always pulls down his stuff is, um, Alberto Veranda or Verada, whatever his name is. He did that really good kind of Bernie Wrights and style thing. He'll just delete his whole gallery every like year or two or not even that, but I mean, he's done it on Instagram. One time his account got hacked, but, um, he's deleted his whole account at least two times. So I've always saved it, save everything and make backups. See, Farben knows that's what I was doing, Farben. I was doing exactly that. I'm I'm going through a 10 terabyte external hard drive right now and organizing it. And then I'm backing it up on a uh, secondary, which I already have this stuff backed up. I'm just trying to get it more organized. Maury Hollowell deleted a lot of good stuff that was helpful, but can't find anybody that has that insider info. I don't even know who Maury is. Interesting. I'll have to look him up. I mean, unfortunately, the like you said, the stuff is down now. Oh, this is really cool. It, you know, it, seeing his, his um, Pascal's work, it does make me wonder what Richard Corbin could have done with this stuff because Corbin is that kind of perfect storm of killer, killer penciling skills, a really good draftsman, meaning that he's a full, fully realized artist. He understands perspective figure drawing and all that. And he's always been someone who was into model building um, and like um, exploring different approaches to art. But man, Corbin would have been insane with this stuff. He had it. Oh, it's a colorist. He had a YouTube channel. Maury Hollowell. You know, the name sounds kind of familiar. There's like, there was a guy that had a really good YouTube channel on coloring and stuff like that. He ended up turning in his channel into more of like a like just chasing like hot topic kind of things like oh disney's up to this or blah 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 and it was like i lost interest as soon as it was just like gimmick gimmick stuff what's up Kier? how are you i'm not sure if i've asked this question before but what are your the, someone asked me that yesterday jim fitzpatrick i don't know who it is i i meant to look it up yesterday but i was too busy but um i think you asked me yesterday alien Oh, that is pretty cool. You know, where where stuff like ZBrush comes in really handy is there's there's some really good designers that work for Sideshow that use ZBrush to um, create those, uh, the, the like, the base models that they use. I mean, a lot of times they're traditionally done too, but... Um, oh, I missed the symbol. Oh, this is really cool. Um, let's see. Was that an actual movie print done for them? I'm late to the party. I'm not really sure. I, I wouldn't surprise me. A lot of like companies like Mondo um, would do a lot of that stuff. So he may have worked for Mondo or Dark Inc. There's a few companies that do that. Oh, yeah. Daniel knows. He says, oh, yeah. Albert Veranda is the worst in that aspect. Yeah, he did it. He did was interesting is so i followed alberto before he started doing that bernie wrights and style i i had seen his art online and he was doing like a really cute kind of like i'm painting in really broad strokes but like like scotty young but a little more like not not as weird as scotty young stuff is and he was really good and i remember saving like 
uh, just a ton of stuff that he did. And then he just completely wiped that stuff off the internet as best as he could. Then he came back with the, the Bernie Wrightson. Um, I can't think of the name of the book. I have it here somewhere. Oh, La Morte Vivante. Um, and so he did a bunch of stuff like that, but he deleted that whole gallery. Then he started his gallery again. Then his gallery got, he got his account got hacked. He started a new gallery and then he deleted that one. And I'm like, I, I mean, we're fans. We, you know, just leave it up. It's okay. <laughs> There's a Canadian statue company, House of Gog. I've heard of them that produces statues based on Pascal's art. Check them out. Very cool. Oh, thanks, Jay. I appreciate it. The the book isn't out yet, but um, I, I really do appreciate it. I've I've um everyone's words of encouragement have been really helpful for me to get confidence because I'm still at a tricky I'm at a tricky stage of learning to draw, which is um the like like the closing the door on like an inking career and then going full on into not just penciling. I kind of I touched on this um yesterday or the day before, but it's it's tricky to juggle all the things that you have to do as a creator now because it's not just about penciling i'm writing penciling inking doing youtube doing lessons doing reviews doing the crowdfunded campaign um you you end up having like you know eight to ten jobs it's really hard very very difficult but this is great so you know one thing that you can do too and i'm not saying that he does it but um there is a way to kit kit bash zbrush assets i mean you could probably do it in just about any 3d program but um, you know, you can collect like a morgue file of um, uh, oh, I forgot what they're called, gimlets. They have a nickname for them, something like that. But uh, yeah, you know, and and you can piece the stuff together and actually create gear out of them. So for someone like him that does like junk tech, you know, you can you can buy like packs of um, gerbils, nernies and gerbils, I think they're called. Your hatchwork is insane. It's really inspiring and impressive. Um, Greebles, yeah, thank you uh your hatchwork is really insane it's really inspiring and impressive thank you thank you i appreciate it this is cool nice elf nerbs and greebles yeah thank you yeah um and uh you know you could get stuff like bones uh, I mean, they don't really do dragon heads, but you could get a dragon head 3D model. And and a lot of times too is I mean, you can you can always take um, a, a pre existing model and build on top of that too, if if you were so inclined. You know, take a boring knife, but it's got a decent shape, and then really detail it, uh, and then use it over and over again. I think Ryan Benjamin for Brothers Bond might have created some sort of. Um, I think it was a pagoda or something like that. And um, I see now this looks like a Daz model to me. Um, the fingers are really weird. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the hands. They are like crazy. The thumb is really long, like the joint from the, where it connects to the palm. And that is long priority. Grassoparensis, ah, yes, good to know. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. The hair is funny. That 3D hair. But anyway, I wanted to I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to see other approaches because we tend on my channel to hang on um, a lot of um, you know comic book art and stuff that's illustrated either digitally or traditionally but i thought it would be fun to see some art that's actually based um comes out of 3d models and stuff like that any thoughts on soriyama the guy who does the sexy robot pinups i mean he he's great i mean i haven't looked at his art on, on any kind of like serious thing in probably 20 years but i mean a long time ago when there wasn't so much art that you could see online every day Soriyama was, you know, a very unique artist. I mean, he still is to some extent. I think his work is very identifiable. But he has, he has beautiful, beautiful rendering and stuff. I, we actually have a really nice, I have like a $700 Soriyama print in, in our bedroom. And it's like in a real nice frame too. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. 
who is our the most underrated comic book artist? I think Ed McGinnis is underappreciated. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, sometimes artists do it to themselves. If you if you fall off the face of the earth, if you're someone who doesn't like social media, um, if you stop working, there was an artist. Oh, what's his name? Howard Porter. Okay, Howard Porter about 10 years ago, maybe even a little bit longer, was really becoming like an up and not, I don't, I wouldn't use the word up and comer, but what I mean is his career was like literally excelling. And he was on like some of the biggest books that DC was producing and his work was looking great. And then at some point, Howard Porter just sort of vanished. So, you know, I, I don't know what happens with some artists. If you go into another field, if you're slow, sometimes people make weird career choices where they go and they do some book for a small company again this is no reference to ed i'm just saying this is these are things that happen um you know and uh people lose track of you in particular now you know if you if you don't have a strong online presence i mean things will sometimes kind of move past you um let's see i'm catching up um Thanks for the following Instagram. Yeah, no worries. I'm tr I'm trying to catch up with people. I mean, I, I it's I'm not on Instagram enough to really notice when um wow. So this got two million views. That's cool. I don't know if I've ever seen this. So, so I guess Pascal has a YouTube channel. Doug Mankey is such a great artist, and I never hear mention of anywhere. Had a pretty good inker for a while too. Yeah. Oh, oh, I mean, I linked I linked Doug on one comic, but he's he's had real good inkers. Um that I think fit his style maybe better than I did. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Ed McGinnis is good pencil, but it doesn't work in animation. See Superman, Batman, Public Enemies. That online presence thing is a full-time job. <laughs> right? I was actually, it was funny. I was wa like, while I was doing a bunch of stuff this morning, I had this guy, um, it's a rap channel and he teaches like how to promote for like hip hop and rap artists. And I was just kind of, it's like something different to listen to. I've been checking out a lot of the Beastie Boys lately. And so I was on this like kind of rap thing. I was listening to some interviews with Eminem. And uh, uh, he was saying like with social media, he was giving a bunch of tips for social media. And it was so funny because it's totally sounds like you could literally just tell the same exact thing to a comic book artist and it's all accurate. But you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to get where like he said, he goes... He goes, people will spend more time arguing about like who's, you know, who's the goat, who are underrated when they should just be working on their own shit. Like, you know, it's like he goes, I wasted so much time arguing on message boards about other people's music when I should have been working on my own. And I was like, bingo. <laughs> not, I'm not it's not a reference to me, but I see that with other people where they're like, all I want to do is draw comics. And I'm like, you're online all day every day if if <laughs> he, you've got to be drawing while you're doing it howard porter i just heard his name he did a portrait logo for a legion of skanks podcast wonder if he's blacklisted then weird times oh i don't know his dvd that is online taught me a lot about acrylics he uses those japanese menso brushes he actually rendered the whole thing with just that small brush do you work for jim fitzpatrick ryan i'm getting suspicious are you his agent? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I will check out Jim Fitzpatrick's work. Odds are I've seen it, to be honest. But but um, yeah, I'll check it out. It sounds familiar, too, that he's Irish. He did most of Thin Lizzy's album covers. Okay. And and the black, white, and red portrait of Che Guevara you, you see on Teachers. Oh, okay. Kier knows. Kier, Kier's very productive. I like this one. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the tutorial is. Ooh, I like this one. The half tone dots and the three to render is sick. Yeah, I mean, they just used Ed's art as the leaping off point for um, that cartoon. I don't think Ed was like involved. Yeah, no, definitely Corbin. He's it's it's really interesting work. I mean, there there's definitely I and I think honestly, like over the last like couple of years, his stuff has even improved. This is from a little like a little while back. He he kind of he he definitely had a noticeable sort of bump in um 
what he was doing like right after this so man i love the corroded paint texture that he gets that's probably one of my favorite things that he does is this rusty kind of oxidized metal sort of vibe i think it's really cool no i was just kidding brian don't don't worry about it i i joke around a lot keep it keep it light hey rich i bought pascal's art book a couple of years ago it's really beautiful and unique stuff i swear you and I have the same exact taste in art, everything from Rosetta to image to Tarada. Yeah, I mean, I I, I had said to someone, because people will ask me, like, who my favorite artists are. And I mean, really, at this point, the last, like, 15, 18 years, if I was really being honest, I don't, like, I, I, I said it in a recent video, I don't really think you have to think that way anymore. That You can just go and enjoy everything. I, I, I hate when I don't know an artist's name that I like. Like I'll, I'll start following someone on Instagram and maybe I don't remember their name and I'll go, I think they're a Chinese artist and they do like this or that. And, you know, I mean, you can find it on Instagram, but you might not know their name, but that that's been happening now for, to me for like 10 years where over time I'll learn their names, but you know, I don't think you have to limit yourself to like, you know, three artists that work just in comics. I'm just catching up with the chat. I need. I would like to see Pascal's art book. Oh, this is cool. This is very Corbin too. Nice moon. It would be really neat to see Pascal move into traditional um, art. I don't know if he if he ever would go like full on into traditional, but it would be really fun to see what he could do using this as reference and then drawing or painting this stuff. Um, you know, could could really um, open up uh, at least a, a fun new avenue. I literally find three new artists per day that are phenomenal. I know. I said, I said that, I swear, I don't think I've ever seen more good art um, ever than what's being produced right now. And, and I, I don't know if it's that everybody is sort of inspired by the quality of work that they're seeing from other people if there's a little bit of a fear, there was another thing that these, the rappers were talking about is um, like AI, you know, another conversation that artists are having a lot, which is like, they're literally able to take like Biggie Smalls and Tupac and have them rap over like a freaking you know, 1999 Dr. Dre style beat that's produced by, you know, someone else. And like, it already sounds pretty good. And I mean, I was getting nervous for the rappers and I'm not even in that game. But it's still, I can relate to it in, in the art field that it's, there's some crazy, crazy stuff going on. Wait till your favorite artists are three AI artists. No. <laughs> hey, what's up, Adam Hilton? How are you? <clears throat> it was interesting hearing like five hip hop producers, though, talk about like AI. <laughs> It's like the one guy was totally in denial. The other guy kind of liked it. The other two guys were like trying to figure out a way where they can maybe make money off of it. <laughs> it was, it's pretty funny. Uh, any sort of psychedelic artist you would recommend? Um, hmm. Psychedelic. Ooh. I mean, I'm a big fan of Storm Thorgerson, who did the Led Zeppelin covers and he did pink floyd i don't know if i would really consider that psychedelic um Drie is kind of psychedelic i don't know I, I don't know if that's really classic psychedelic art though but drew 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 yay it looks like juliet um juliet um is really good uh psychedelic artists I mean, Alex Gray is a psychedelic artist. Adam, Android Jones, you might like. Android Jones is a digital artist, but he does um, he does really good stuff. He goes, I think it's at like Android. I think maybe his name is Andrew Andrew Jones, but I think I think he's Android on um, Instagram. His studio just burned down. They did a huge um, crowdfunding campaign to help him get back on his feet. He lost like everything. Ben Ridgway is a current psychedelic artist that seems to have a hybrid digi, digi manual 2D field. That's cool. Stanley Mouse, but his stuff has been around forever. But, you know, if he's never seen it, that would be good. I mean, I was honestly, I mean, 
there are newer artists that I've seen that do really good psychedelic stuff. Um, some of them work in like fractal. Like I follow a few on Instagram, but I followed them a long time ago. And I, I, they're, they're people that like, I like when I see their work, but I don't know their names, unfortunately. This is cool. Yeah, the hands struggle a little bit, even with these things. This is hand is kind of weird too. The bones are like, what is going on? Yeah, he's Android Jones. I was going to mention him, but I didn't know if you knew him. Yeah, I was on Concept Art back when when he was doing the thousand portraits. I've been I've been following that stuff for a long time since I've been online. I literally like the moment I was able to get on the internet, I started to follow like everything. <laughs> Anything music or art related, I've probably dipped my toe in it. I but I'm not a TV guy. I'm not a movie guy um as much so those two things i've i've literally probably explored a little bit of everything but yeah conceptart.org was great and back then android was doing um i i remember seeing miles johnson when he was a teenager there miles was probably 15 or 16 years old um i'm sure some people know who miles johnson is but yeah miles was just a kid drawing like fantasy fantasy art like little um you know, like knights and armor and stuff like that. Psychedelic. Let's see. I'm sure I spelled that wrong. Oh, Alex Nino. Yeah, Nino is pretty psychedelic, honestly. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny that you said that, um, Daniel, about psychedelic. I have enough nightmares already. I don't need more. It is really interesting because as someone who, like for me, I draw dark art. I know that some people are really, really sensitive to like anything that's a little bit weird or dark, like where it's really repellent to them and they can only really handle, I'm not saying you, but um, you know, they, it's like, if it's not Superman and tights or, you know, something like Batman, it's too, it's too weird. Like, I don't, I'm not into that shit. That's too weird. Chicks with robot arms or whatever. So, yeah. Let's see. I think that art has taken such a jump because we are sharing way more of our methods. Right. And guitar did that too. Um, guitar literally went uh, like off the charts with like people. I mean, you'd seen it for a while where there'd be like some kid in Russia or a Japanese, you know, little girl or something like that. that could just rip on guitar where like adults are going like, I've been playing for 30 years and I can't do that. Um, but a lot of, you know, other age people are affected by it too because of the fact that there are so many lessons um free and paid um that can help you sort of level up and uh if you take advantage of it and try to learn from it i mean you really can um minimize probably the time spent uh, like hitting your head against the wall and thanks prince i i appreciate you being here so thank you why does her head look like thanos though oh <laughs> i wasn't this piece but i like this this looks like it could be in a Guillermo del Toro movie. There's one. We'll go for like seven more minutes. We'll go to like 12.15 since I started late. Lots of manga like Gantz use 3D models. Work. Yeah, totally. And it looks good. I mean, I, I really like the Gantz um, anime. There was another anime. I always mention it, and I never can remember the name of it. It was like two little short characters. One of them had like a black face, and he got burnt. And they were like they they almost lived in like a gangster part of town in like a beat up house. And there was like I can't remember what it's called. It was on it was on Netflix a couple of years ago. I'll see if anyone knows what I'm talking about. I really like the animation on that, but I think that the I think that the environments were three D. And then maybe the animation was, um, yeah, yeah, MFKZ. That is so cool. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I love that. I, I think that's, I, I really liked it. I put it on. I had no idea. I didn't know anything about it. And I just saw it recommended on Netflix. And I was like, I'll check this out. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I learned a lot on YouTube, free stuff. I've learned up a lot in the last five years but it takes practice and application to get there yeah i mean honestly just the amount of free content that's on like proco's channel if you really went through proco's channel and just like set your mind to like i'm gonna watch this one video and i'm gonna really try to get like whatever he's talking about in this one particular video down and you did that for like 20 videos you would learn so much but what ends up happening with people online and i'm guilty of it too 
is you become fractal. You just, you literally break apart because you're like, uh, you start to like multitask learning where you're like, oh, I want to learn this. 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 I need to learn hair. I want to draw horses. Oh man, this guy just put up a hand tutorial. I want to do that. Oh, Finch is doing a video on painting. I want to learn to paint. And all of a sudden you're like overwhelmed. You know, you have to be focused. You know, this is what I taught myself is when I'm drawing, I have one challenge at a time. And the one challenge is whatever's on the next page. I don't need to worry about what's on pages. I mean, it's a painting in broad strokes, but it's like, it's like you only draw one thing at a time. You can't, you know, you, it, it's like, there's a series of, of challenges that you need to solve on any particular drawing. And based on your skill level of the different things that you're going to have to address, you can either work through it methodically or not. And if you find that you're stuck on a lot of stuff, then you probably don't have the fundamental skills to work through it. But like yesterday, I did a video on Patreon and I did finishes over a face that you could barely, barely see. Finishes meaning I kind of I kind of inked it, but I kind of drew it. But I mean, you know, I, I did it because I know how to draw. Um, it, it wasn't like my inking skills wouldn't have got me through that. Cause I couldn't see what I was inking. It was like a very faded drawing. Um, and you know, uh, but, but yeah, if you can like, like say you want to draw a Spider-Man story, then you need to decide like what's going to be in your Spider-Man story and just make sure that you can do that stuff good. And then if you're going to deal with Batman, then you would, you know, learn that, but it definitely will help. ADD and Asperger's are the bane of, of my artist art, artist approaches only time. I sometimes do wonder if I have ADD a little bit, to be honest. I've never been diagnosed with it, but uh, it's possible that I might have a hint of it because I'm pretty, I'm pretty out there, but I've been able to manage it well enough, so it doesn't affect me too much. But I, I have a hunch that I may have it a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not looking for it to be clear. Like I know that's sort of a 2023 sort of thing where it's like people want like labels, but um, I've thought this for a while. I'm either that or I'm hyperactive. One or the other. Let's see. Everyone has ADD. Yeah. that And that could be it too, where it's like, like, you know, there's levels of it. Asperger's and stuff like that are definitely different beasts for sure. So I'm going to check out the David Finch stream. Now. Oh, is he is, is Finch back streaming? I didn't know he had come back. I know he was taking a break, but I, I didn't know much about it. We saw this one already. People too quick to diagnose themselves nowadays. Yeah. I was saying I follow another stream at night when I'm playing guitar. It has nothing to do with art or music. It's just a um, uh, like a scanner, police scanner channel, and they just go to different police scan calls. Um, but the the chat is just people complaining about health and how sick they are. I, honestly, I, I had to block like 20 people because all they would do is talk about, I have to go to the doctor for this and I need medication for this and I'm taking this. And I was like, man, can't I can't listen to this night after night or read it. <laughs> I don't think you can be an artist without, right? Maybe that is true too. When Finch is doing a stream with Jorge Jimenez though, that would be nice. Focus is not easy. Otherwise, we'd all be able to produce masterpieces. Yep. I I jokingly referred to that that sort of behavior as, do you remember when you were a kid and someone would let, like, they'd tell a story about how they broke their arm or how they got stitches in their arm or something like that. And then for the next like hour, everybody is telling their like scar or hospital story or whatever it is. It's kind of like that, but on the internet. <laughs> This is a weird one. I couldn't, I, I assume this is maybe a ship or a gun turret. I don't know what it is. With all my health stuff, you'd never know it from my social media. Yeah, no kidding, James. You've been through hell and back for sure. I mean, I, I and I don't think that there's anything wrong with someone saying, hey, you know, look, I've had some health issues. It's not that. It's just um some of the people uh, uh, in particular on this chat that I follow um, it was overboard every night. It just went on and on and on. Uh, I love this piece. Okay, so we're going to start to wrap it up. These pieces are gorgeous. Love the way he use, utilizes light, even with no color. Um, Finch said on his channel at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, 
this was the book I got Derelict Planet. Okay. I, I want to say that this might have been the Gnomon DVD um, tutorial too. I haven't seen it in a while, but I, I kind of think that this was the piece that he did. This is cool. This almost reminds me of, um, oh, what's his name? I have one of his books here. Oh, um, Yasuki Nirasawa. Like, like Nirasawa, like the models that he would make um, uh, kind of have this vibe, some of them. Let's see, what did Daniel say? Um, yeah, I understand. I'm in the same time zone as Finch, but sometimes they can run away from me. It's right when I make dinner, you know? It's like at six, I'm starting to like transition from day work to like sort of family guy for an hour or two. Oh, this is really cool. This might be my favorite piece that we've seen. It, it's the figure is further away, but I actually like the atmosphere. I like the lighting. I like this cool blue shadow that he's getting on stuff. Um, great featured artist, Rich. What a fun one today. Yeah, I was trying to come up with something different. And again, you know, please keep recommending stuff. If for some reason, like there's a day where I don't get to the replies um, on the previous stream, it's just that I'm busy. Yesterday, I literally finished shooting and I had to get right to work because um, I was, I had so much to do. Um, catching up with the chat again. Going to be a good one, though. Going to try to prep a sketch for after. Do you know what David is drawing tonight? Did he say what, like, the, the plan is? Oh, these are, like, the little girls. Okay. Those are nice. Nice, nice little, like, this would be a nice little package to get, like, a print set with some stickers. Okay. I'm going to start wrapping it up. Look, he's selling pizza and prints. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> These are like the fancy prints. Is Jimenez going to be on tonight? Let me know. Is is Jorge Jimenez going to be on Finch's show? Oh, this is great too. He prepped a Moon Knight Punisher mashup. Oh, okay, cool. Ooh, look at this. This one has kind of the Nirasawa vibe to me too. Oh man, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. So let's escape here and here and remove. So look, you guys have a great day. That was fun. It was something a little bit different. And again, no approach should be off limits for you. This is 2023. The future is now. You have technology at your fingertips. You can draw traditionally. You could draw in Clip Studio. You could paint in Corel Painter. You could do some kind of weird thing in Photoshop. Maybe you want to use Blender. Maybe you want to, I like, I want to get into animation, but I don't want to animate it myself. What I want to do is I want to do like keyframes and then get someone, um, get someone that can um, animate to, to maybe do it. I, I don't have the money to hire someone right now, but like down the road, maybe next year um, and start doing some short animations. Um, not only just for Blaster Kid, but for a few other things. So, oh, no worries. It's a it's a pretty good show if you if you like um his art I think you'll 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 dig the the video it's it's very cool and again definitely I've got a link to his Instagram go check it out because um the this stuff is from about at, at least sixteen months ago so um there's plenty of new art that he's done over the last like year or two I want to get into Blender the the interface has improved a lot I've goofed around with Blender but I was like the closest I ever got to doing anything three D was um. God, what program would it have been? Eh, none of them. I'd be lying. I fucked around with ZBrush. I've screwed around with um, 3D Studio Max way back. I kind of goofed around with Maya for a minute, um, and then uh, I've I've like done a few tutorials in Blender, but I've never I've never done really much with it. So, but they they look really really cool. Yeah, Kier, we're um I I'm gonna talk to Kelsey um probably tomorrow and start nailing down the final stuff for the launch. Um, so it's coming soon. I've heard some weird stuff about Indiegogo. I don't really know what's going on at Indiegogo right now, but I've definitely been hearing rumblings. So we'll see. I'm hoping that Indiegogo would still be a, a good platform for it. But if not, I mean, I'm pretty flexible. So I think to me, what I think with Blaster Kid, at least my opinion is people are going to get it wherever I sell it that, that want it. So I, I don't think that I need to worry that much about like if Indiegogo 
takes the shit on it because it's basically blaster kid is going to mainly sell from word of mouth and people that are already following me and waiting for it so you know i, I think I, I think i'll be fine regardless but um yeah no worries thank you i appreciate that you guys thought it was an awesome stream because I, I i was so rushed getting to not getting it together but getting online i was like oh man this is gonna be shitty but I, I really do think that these are these are kind of funner shows than the videos where i would just like look at an artist's work and like talk about it because the inner the, the interaction is making this way more dynamic and any artist that we really love i can always do a video of so we can have that 1440p um quality on them but yeah no worries yeah indiegogo shadow bands that's what i've heard and you know honestly like if you if you look up stuff on indiegogo it they really do it's not like it's not um sort of like people just saying it i mean it, they, they literally are hiding some people's campaigns which is really really weird trophy yellow smiling <laughs> igg will shadow ban some campaigns but you should be fine since it's your first yeah and i think you know um blaster kid is especially when you see it in color oh thank you so much man i appreciate it, jason um when you see it with color it's really kind of magical looking and um i think that's that's really going to put it over the edge because i've always as much as i love doing the black and white art i know people respond to the black and white art real positively but for me blaster kid has always been um like i picture it in color and there's like a lot of mood and settings that um to me like the color tells the story so um you know i think when people see the colors it it, it will be really cool both ways sorry right, you guys wait home was this i was on there yesterday i never got notifications for some creators that i followed the campaign's already ended oh that sucks see that's lame yeah so okay look i'm gonna go i need to get to work i won't be back tomorrow but um saturday night if you actually want to see me on a stream oh wow sprouts thank you so much geez louise that i really appreciate that if you have anything to plug or anything let me know but um i'm gonna be on johnny bean tv it's johnny like j-o-h-n-n-y and then bean b-e-a-n-e -E, um tv it's a youtube channel oh look at james james thank you um on saturday night he does a show called Saturday night it would be for more music people but it's eight to ten o'clock approximately um on youtube west coast time and uh we're gonna just talk van halen guitars and um it's gonna be sandwich night so we're all gonna eat sandwiches and just hang out for like two hours so if you want to come by you can i i johnny's really close to ten thousand subscribers on youtube so i'm hoping that um that'll get him over the hump and uh johnny was one of the reasons that i actually came on to youtube i really liked his channel i liked the community that he had and um yeah plug it plug your plug your um plug your tattoo shop uh but yeah johnny's johnny's channel and community actually was one of the main reasons why i came to youtube and i always credit the other one too which is um anthony jones robot pencil between those two I went like they really make youtube look fun and i like their personalities so that was why i um i do youtube a, a big reason of it and i, and I do credit jonathan glapian because glapian had uploaded some tutorial videos and um i i thought that 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 was really cool too van halen was your first concert very cool okay i'm out of here you guys have a great day and um i'll see you there saturday night on johnny bean tv or sunday for super fun sunday and I'm not 100% sure what we're going to do, but we may follow up and do the second half of the double page spread show. So um, I'll do a video update for people that want to nominate um, more spreads. And I'll look back at the other posts to see. Uh, it's Johnny Bean TV. I'll write it down. It's it's the YouTube channel is just Johnny Bean. Uh, but I think his channel is called Johnny Bean TV. It's fun, you know. It's it's nerdy guitar shit, but but uh, it'll it'll be fun. It'll it's it's a pretty funny show. Not you know, not um, <laughs> not Jack show funny, <laughs> but it's got its own thing. But all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Yeah, double pages is right here. All right, bye. See you later. Have a nice day.